limiter block, let's say, uh, to uh, even at 0.99, and if I'm running at very high speed, uh, very high frequency, let's say even 100 kilo, uh, 20 kilohertz, then uh, this may not give me enough time uh, to, when I transition, when this uh, becomes very small, then if these are complementary drives, I don't have enough time, uh, I may not have enough time left, let's say when I want to turn this off and turn this on. The controller may demand 0.1 microsecond. I want a transition between 0.1 microsecond, right? So the, the, the top guy tries to switch off, the bottom guy tries to switch on, and you have issues. Now, of course, you can put delays in there, you know, the dead time delays and all that good stuff is, is there. But even then, that delay you want to reduce because if you're trying to maximize your voltage to your drive, you want to minimize that delay, right? So, so there are practical issues where why you want to include this limiter block to simulate somewhat of a realistic, uh, realistic. Uh, you said UT thinking limiter. Yes. How is it going to help the uh, shoot? Good question. Let's see. We have, see if I have a complementary drive, right, and I have, let's say, the dead time between the two, if I take an IR driver, international rectifier driver, I can have a dead time, let's say, about 500 nanoseconds, right? So if I have a MOSFET, so when I'm going to, let's say, 0 0.99, right, let's see, here. So this is my PWM. So theoretically, if I go to one, right, my top switch is on, and the bottom switch doesn't matter, right? So that that's normally independent. Pardon me. So right now, these are independent because they're considered only high set figures. That's right. That's right. That's right. The, the, the more important of this is to to really include when you have a complementary drivers. Right? That, that, that's more important. That's correct. So that is correct. Uh, this this in this case, this particular thing, PWM, whatever you have to is it only for it's only for AT. AT, B T and C T. That's correct. That's, that's, the bottom. that's right. But I think also also the Another implication. I can never have if I if I, I never want to have my top switch off. Because if I want to have my top switch off, okay, uh, I can accidentally go into a linear operation, linear mode of operation for the top switch. Right? So let's say uh, I am uh, this is my PWMA form and my this is my duty cycle command. Now, as it approaches one, I'm trying to, the, the gate drive pulses are going like this. And they become very, very tiny. Now, when they become very, very tiny, I run the risk of blowing the top back. Because I may not have enough time to turn it on, right? So, so if I have, let's say, a pulse, which is, 500 nanoseconds, and obviously if you're, IG, if you're using an IGBT, you're toast, right? You can't turn it on very fast. So that's where I think it becomes significant even for practical reasons to have the limiter block even in this case. Does that make sense? Basically what you are going to do is you're going to uh, on, on the width of the pulse, you're going to make it a little bit higher. That's right. You're increasing so that the LGBT reacts. Before the LGBT reacts, it's going to turn off. So you That's don't right. want that to happen. Right, right, right. I, I want to make sure that we, we remain in the switching operation zone. We never go, never run a risk of running into a linear operation zone where IGBT becomes a resistor or a MOSFET, as a matter of fact, becomes a resistor. Basically, you're limiting the width of the pulse. 
That's right. Basically, that's what you're doing. That's exactly what you're doing. Is limiting the. We took the smaller function. That's right. Function. That's right. That's right. So that's why it becomes very, very, very critical. As you increase the frequency, well, even even at lower frequency, you want to have that limiter block. What will be the percentage from the peak value? See, it really depends on the device you use. For example, if I use a if I use a MOSFET, let's say from IR, I use a, a MOSFET, low voltage MOSFET. Uh, let's say 60 volt, uh, even a 100 amp MOSFET. I can switch in nanoseconds. Let's say, but the, uh, at least that's what the data sheet says. The data sheet says that I can switch in nanoseconds. I can have, let's say, 200 nanosecond switch of time. But I want, I want at least some safety margin. So I can say, well, let's say it's one microsecond. I don't want to get near one microsecond. So if you're switching at 20 kilohertz, right, that is uh, 50 microseconds, then one, one microsecond or 50 microsecond is 2%. So you could set, you could set that, say, okay, I, let me set it at 0.98 and 0.02. So that's one way to think about it. Right, so that's 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 the thinking behind the limiter block. It's it's from from having burned few MOSFETs. <laughs> so you're it at 0 0.01 to 0 0.99. Right, right. So you don't want to go into over modulation. That's right. That's right. Now over modulation, I think is uh, we'll talk about that in in the in the in AC inverters where you have low frequency, and uh, you do run a risk. If, if you, when you're transitioning, your pulses become too small, you can get, you can, you can get hosed. Okay.